Hello and welcome to a new video on attempted proof of the Riemann Hypothesis Part 3. I'm your host, Trader Zeta, and hopefully doing very, very well. First things first, thank you for watching, I really do appreciate it. And now on to the video. Our goal is to find theta bar of xn. Okay, and that is defined as x ddx of uh, this midtime Leffler function. And we'd hope to find some type of asymptotic expansiveness. Okay, so we're going to use the Mellon-Barnes integral approach. In order to understand this approach, you have to understand the Mellon transform first, and it is defined here. You have uh, m sub x of f of x going to some complex variable s. And the integral transform is defined as uh, integral 0 to infinity, x to the s minus 1, f of x dx. And you have uh, the transformed function right there, of a complex variable, I should say. So, say for example you want to go the other way, and you want to get f of x, you can do the inverse Mellon transform, and you have to use this complex line integral, 1 divided by 2 pi i, complex line integral, x to the uh, minus s, the transform function, uh, ds, f of x. Or I should say just some complex value function. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, line integral setup. We're going to go from c uh, minus i infinity to c plus i infinity. We're going to go capture all the poles, add them all up, and we're going to say, hey, look, uh, they're all going to be a factor of 2 pi i because of Cauchy's residue theorem. So uh, all we have to do is do this 1 divided by 2 pi i, and we get our function back. So f of x. OK, cool. So this is a kind of a Mellon-Barnes integral. I'm going to say that uh, not super rigorously, but you know, this Mellon-Barnes, this, this form is very, very uh, nice for our use. So classically, we have a Mellon transform of a mid toggle left there function at negative x. And it's going to go to s. And that transform results in gamma of s, uh, gamma 1 minus s, uh, divided by gamma beta minus alpha of s. And this uh, result you can see actually uh, in many different papers. It's a very uh, you know, well-known result. It's, it's just everywhere. Um, we are uh, going to keep this in mind, but what we're going to do is use uh, this book right here, Asymptotics and Bell and Barnes Integral, R.V. Paris and D. Kaminsky. Okay, and this is uh, Encyclopedia of Mathematics and Applications, 85. All right, this is a wonderful book. On page 186, you have actually not the beta directly. Uh, it's going to just be like this, but we can instantly generalize to beta. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be all the same. We, we don't lose anything. And now what we'd like to do is start to construct theta of x, theta bar of xn. So we take uh, x going to x to the n, and uh, we plug that in. This is very, very simple substitution. Now we look uh, do uh, x ddx of the mid tog left function, uh, x to the n. And you can see, look, uh, this comes down here. And because uh, we have this extra x right here, the negative 1 uh, goes away. So that's very classical, like, you know, very, very shift operator-like. Okay. For alpha equals n and beta equals n plus 1, we're going to plug things in. Okay, so you have now, what, uh, gamma n plus 1 minus ns. And now we have, what, theta bar xn. Okay. Now this is very, very nice because uh, we can now do some really good analysis on this, but we can't do it immediately. We have to chop at this uh, term right here. So just like in the book, what we're going to do is use this identity, sine pi s equals pi s divided by these uh, gamma functions. And we're going to say, look, s is going to go to n s minus n. We plug that in. and. Uh, Yes, we get this identity, which is very, very nice. This gamma ns minus n sine uh, pi ns minus n equals, look, uh, this pi divided by gamma ns, which is right, right, right down here, right? So essentially, we can plot this right in here. And we can use a little bit of substitution. And what we get is this entire representation. So our theta bar of xn is going to be uh, this right here. So you have what? 1 divided by 2 pi i, complex line integral, negative sn, gamma uh, sn minus n, 
sine uh, pi n s minus n, cotangent pi s, x to the negative s uh, ds. Okay, and this is really, really good in my opinion, uh, because what we can do is use the definition of cotangent, cotangent pi s equals cos pi s divided by sine pi s. We can move the sine pi s underneath here, and we get this beautiful, beautiful term right here. Now, why is it so beautiful, you might ask? It has a uh, recursive property, and from recursive property, and uh, you can build a finite sum, okay? So this right here is going to be the key uh, for us getting our asymptotic expanse, all right? So in order to do this, we're going to have to use a whole bunch of trigger identities. Um, I'm going to flip the board, and we are going to jump right into that. All right, I have just written theta bar of xn right here one more time. Here is the term that we're seeking to investigate. Now, I'm not going to lie. There are uh, a lot of trig identities here. Um, this one is uh, cited in the book, okay? So this one right here is um, straight from the book. Sine pi vs divided by sine uh, pi s. And you have uh, this finite sum, and it comes from this uh, recursive uh, property. Unfortunately, we can't just use this because we have pi uh, ns minus n. We factor out the n, we get an s minus one. So we have to use uh, this one right here. So using the same logic from this, uh, we can build our new recurrence identity and it looks like this, okay? Notice there is a negative there, okay? This is due to all, you know, sorts of trig identities. Um, all of these you can verify inside of uh, Wolfram Alpha. So I would say you, you would look at this one first, make sure this one is like totally correct. And then from this, you can extrapolate uh, the recursive uh, finite sum, okay? All right, last uh, trig identity here that we're going to really focus on is cotangent uh, pi s times sine pi n s minus 1 is equal to uh, this right here. Okay, so this is, I think, easily verifiable. Look, if you just multiply pi sine pi s on both sides, uh, you know, you can get uh, to that result pretty easily, in my opinion. Okay, now notice uh, cos uh, pi n s minus 1 is very, very nice uh, because <clears throat> here we just have this term right here, uh, and we can plug everything in to this, okay? So all we have is n minus 1, so v becomes n minus 1. We plug in v, n minus 1, every, every, everything here is v, um, this v is uh, n minus 1 everywhere here, and you get this. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So now we have Sn goes to M, and this is going to be our uh, theta bar of Xn. So we can plug in our sum, and everywhere we see S, we can substitute for, uh, or at least solve for M, okay? So this was, for example, an S, right? This was an S. But we can say, look, um, S, uh, if, uh, yes, so we have S goes to uh, M divided by N. So that's the same thing, we're just doing a bit of algebra there. And everything plops in very nicely, so we have, what, M divided by N. So now we have everything in terms of M. Okay, and we have X to the uh, minus M dm divided by n. And because it was ds, we have to use this right here. All right, so now we have, what, three integrals? So we have uh, this one right here, uh, this one right here, and this one right here. And we can denotate them as uh, i sub 0 comma a, i uh, sub 0 uh, comma b, and so on and so forth. And I think this is going to be really, really useful. Um, so we are going to, in the next video, uh, tackle uh, these integrals. We're going to do this one first because I think it's the uh, probably the, the nicest to do first.
So hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, all the good stuff. And I will see you in the next video.